for charity easter edition 2015 day three it's our final day we have only three matches left for you three best of sevens with some very very good players to show you we obviously had chalky beating jab four to three in our first semi-final so chalky we're gonna see him in the final later competing for uh two and a half thousand dollars first prize and of course the uh fame and fortune that comes from winning the king win for charity tournament but we have our second semi-final here that i know a lot of people will be looking forward to it's tides of time versus Forsen. Now, these two players are both very interesting. We talked about them both yesterday, but uh, TJ, talk, talk us through Tides of Time a little bit. And obviously, is a player who did very well last year, won a lot of prize money, but hasn't really been seen as much this year. Yeah, at the end of last year, he sort of got burnt out from the game. Uh, he was streaming a whole lot. He was playing in a lot of tournaments, traveling through a lot of tournaments. And that can get pretty tiring. And Hearthstone is a game that, <clears throat> I mean, it's a card game. So sometimes you have frustrating losses. Uh, you have games that you thought you should have won, but you lose. And that can make it so you, you sort of get a little bit of a negative feel towards the towards the game. And he took a couple month break. He, he traveled, he went to events, but he didn't actually participate. He went to events that were outside of uh, the realm of Hearthstone. And he it reinvigorated his passion for playing Hearthstone, and it reinvigorated his passion for um, for for playing cool and interesting decks. And since then, since he's come back, he... He hasn't really had as much success as he did prior to it, uh, but he's starting to get out of that slump. He's starting to um, to really come into his own again, and his deck building skills are showing through. We saw him bring the Mill Druid yesterday, which seemed like it was a direct counter to the Freeze Mage that a lot of players were bringing. It seemed like Freeze Mage didn't have an opportunity to even find wins because he just has so much heal. He was burning cards left and right, and it was a really creative addition to a deck lineup uh, to, to face a current meta. Forsen, on the other hand, he's also a player that's been in a slump, but he's basically been in a slump since, for as long as I can remember. He hasn't had a really good breakthrough performance. The Viking House Cup, he took top eight, but the last time I saw him in a finals was, I can't even remember. It was like ESGN, but there was only two teams ever competing against each other, so every single week was a final. Um, but he's having some success with this tournament. He's brought some interesting decks of his own. His, uh, his homemade Grim Pagan Warrior deck is really cool to watch and really interesting to watch. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this battle. Either of these players making it to the finals would make for an exciting time. Yeah, he, so he did get the semifinals at the first Biogame House Cup, and he uh, he did uh, get get second place in the Battle of the Best back in October, which is a smaller online tournament. Uh, lost the D2 in the final of that, but that's really the closest he's come to winning any kind of to any kind of title. And this would be the biggest win of his Hearthstone career, and I know the Forsen boys are going to be cheering him on. And like I said earlier, the Forsen boys, they either want... Uh, a complete blowout loss, so they can enjoy, they can revel in that. They're uh, all forcing, as it was from Deck Wars, or they want him to see him succeed, and they're they're really cheering on their dad to to get victory here. So this is going to be really interesting. And like you say, tied to time, it's good to see him bringing things which are a little bit more interesting to really reinvigorate himself and and be a bit more interested in the game. Like you say, he struggled to be interested in the game in the, the sort of last six months, if ever since we. Uh, I think the last big tournament he was in was DreamHack Winter at the end of last year, and then he took that break. Um, I think he ended up losing to Reynad in the first round of that DreamHack Winter, and that was really, that was really tough because that was just after he left uh, Temple Storm and joined Cloud9. So we'll see if Tides is able to uh, get back to his previous form here. Did win the WEC tournament, uh, winning a huge amount of money there. So it was one of the biggest prize earners. <laughs> won a huge amount of money and then tried to fly from China back into the United States with the cash prize people when when tournaments say that there's a cash prize for winning usually what they mean is like your money not, yeah you're not going to get the money in like stocks and bonds it's just money like you, you're going to get a check maybe mm -hmm. like a couple weeks later a month later and you're going to be able to cast a check and then you're going to have cash but no when wc said there's a 30 whatever thousand dollar cash prize for first place they literally meant we're going to give you cash right before you leave to go home and uh, he had a lot of trouble with that. It was a funny story. Uh, he got caught at customs and and, and questioned and God knows yeah, I mean, what behind closed doors. But I uh, I actually covered this story quite a lot for uh, both Ghost of Gamers, where I used to work, and now the Daily Dot. Uh, covered it twice because it took them so long to play the to pay him his his money after it got taken off him. Um, and I, I remember speaking to the organizers of WEC and saying, "Why did you why why did you give him it in cash, knowing that this would be a problem?" And he said, "We thought it would look cool." Uh, which is true. It's, it's pretty cool to 
take a briefcase full of cash, but then uh, to have to do something with taking it out of the country. As I said yesterday, uh, the owner of Cloud9 ended up having to sneak his out of the country in order to get it out. Because it is actually against Chinese law. So I'm not sure if Jack Etienne is is welcome in China anymore. Um, hopefully that doesn't cause him any problems in the future. But uh, yeah, Tides of Time did win a huge amount of money. Giant checks like, are cool too. Giant novelty checks are really good. A lot of tournaments let you keep the giant novelty checks. Which is uh, really what, that's what you're playing for in offline events, right? Um, uh, every tournament lets you. Why would, what's the point of having a giant check if they can't keep it? They sign your name on it. Why would they keep a giant check if they sign your name on it? They're pretty hard to like fly home with. Oh, it, it doesn't matter if you're walking around an airport with a giant check. You're, you're gonna be, you're gonna be the, the the man of the hour. People are gonna be coming up to you. Oh, where'd you win that giant check? That guy's famous because he won a giant check. They ask you, hey, how'd you? What'd you do to win that giant tech check? Oh, I won. Played some video games. I, I was a card slinger. I was slinging cards. I, I went to China and started slinging cards. And then they gave me this giant check. Yeah, when I casted the Insomnia Festival, they gave them all giant novelty checks. Even for, like, third place, Blackout got one. So I think he got one for, like, £350, which is just over $500. Giant novelty check. It's, yeah. not the, it's not the size of the prize that counts. It's the size of the novelty check. I'm going to organize a personal tournament with a $10 prize pool. And then I'm going to spend $150 each on 10 novelty checks and give out, like, fractions of dollars on these giant novelty checks to anybody that participate in my, participates in my tournament. Yeah, just you get a giant novelty check, uh, pay some mor some, a moral victory for taking part. Yeah, exactly. It's not even a check. You can't even... De you, well, you can't deposit a novelty check in the first place. It's impossible. What, what movie was that from where someone tried to deposit a giant novelty check? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember. remember. I don't remember either. Yeah. Yeah, so we uh <laughs> moving on back to talking about forcing for a second. We're uh, just waiting to get these players ready. Obviously, we're uh, filling time a little bit here while we get these guys good to go for the semifinal. Uh, Forsen, known for his freeze mage play really in tournaments, so he is bringing the freeze mage here. We saw the mech shaman as well, the fell reaver mech shaman and the... Uh, as you said, the Grim Patron Warrior. Uh, not sure what, he, what he's bringing for his fourth deck yet. We haven't seen the final deck lineups. So we will see what he's decided to bring. I wonder if he's decided to bring a hard counter to Mildred. What is the hard counter to Mildred? Who knows? Who knows? A, a slightly slower Mildred? There's actually <laughs> a lot of counters to Mildred. Mildred's actually a, a terribly inconsistent deck. Aggro decks just own Mildred's. You could play Hunter, you could play uh, Zoo Warlock, um, even like Mech Mage. Pretty much anything, but really slow control decks counters Mildred. Because who cares if they heal up? Like, if they spend a turn giving you cards with Cold Light Oracle, you're like, okay, cool. Usually you have more than 8 damage on the board when they heal for 8. So it's it's just, they're just buying themselves time. We saw yesterday, any game that Tides didn't play the Mildred, he had a lot of trouble. Uh, he, he won the game against D2's Paladin in the first round on Friday. But that was because D2 just didn't un didn't know the full extent of the deck. He didn't know that the deck played combo, so he didn't play round combo. There was actually a chance for him to win that game. But now that the players are through the tournament, they've had a chance to see the deck, they've had a chance to see exactly what the deck contains, they can play around things like that, and they know exactly what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. It's... Uh... Gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty interesting to see how these lineups match up and see the Mill Druid. It's a great surprise the first time, but the more you go through the tournament, it will be interesting to see how these guys line up against it. Um, we're just getting everything set up. But while we do that, of course, we've obviously got some uh, lots of things to tell you about. First of all, also uh, thank you to both Masan and Kungan who are hosting this channel right now to put, shine some more light on this epic clash between Forsen and Tides. Um, we also want to tell you about the Child's Play Foundation as well. Of course, this tournament is the Kingwin for Charity Tournament, and that is the charity we're fundraising for. You can see the number down below of uh, how much we've raised so far. And if you want to donate, there's a link in the bottom of the Twitch description. Let's go click that. Child's Play Foundation, of course, is a charity which buys games and consoles for kids with cancer and long-term illness, make their stay in hospital or their last days a little bit more comfortable. You can also enter a raffle that TJ is going to tell you about because he's very excited about the prize. Oh, yeah. If you guys want some packs, I have, want packs? I have news for you. We are giving away packs. Kingwin has generously offered up 20 packs to the person who types exclamation mark packs the fastest. 
If you can type exclamation mark packs in three separate lines the quickest, then you have a better chance of getting packs. Uh, but no, for real, if you type exclamation mark packs, a link will come up in chat uh, from one of the bots. It'll send you to a web page, follow the instructions on the web page, and you'll be entered in a raffle to win 20 packs. So uh, it's really exciting stuff. Packs are one of the most exciting things about Hearthstone, at least for me. I value packs more than just about anything else in my life. Aside from my true. girlfriend, she'll get really mad if I, I say that I value packs like over packs her. packs more than his girlfriend. I do not, no. His girlfriend isn't even real, it's just packs. It's just a pile of pack codes that he sits and says, I love you too. That's what it is. Busted. <laughs> of course, all this weekend as well, if you want to pick up a new game, you can go to the Kingwin store and use the code for charity to get 5% off. Maybe you want to pick up GTA 5. I've been playing that myself, and I picked that up from Kingwin. Uh, GTA 5, get some new, some GTA online going on with your friends, going, getting in on those heists, uh, Mortal Kombat 10, Pillars of Eternity, so many good so many good games uh, available right now, and you can get 5% off all this weekend with the code for charity. So make sure you've entered the raffle, make sure you've made a donation to Child's Play, make sure you've bought yourself a game, so you you know you can have a pretty good weekend overall. You're getting to watch some great Hearthstone, buy yourself a new game for when the tournament's over, it gives you something to do. Uh, you can install it while you're watching the tournament. Watching the tournament, great thing to do while your game's installing. And if uh, if you want to get GTA 5, that's a 60 gig install. So you've got to find something to pass the time while that 60 gig is installing. Um, but make sure if you do that and you're into the raffle and everything, you've made a donation to Child's Play as well. So you feel good about yourself. Or what you can do is you can go to Kingwin, buy GTA 5, go out on the streets, find a 12-year-old kid whose mom wouldn't let him get GTA 5. <laughs> <laughs> and sell it to him for a profit for his allowance. Or you put him on a payment plan where you get his allowance every single week and you give him GTA 5 when he finally pays it off. Like a layaway. You're you're evil, TJ. What are you, you going to make him pay you in packs? I would make him pay in packs, but you know, some people out there, they just like to take advantage of of kids who's, whose parents are stricter. And if there's any 12-year-old kids in chat who... Whose parents wouldn't let them buy GTA 5? I got some GTA 5 for you. Hit me up after oh, that, the broadcast. That seems really sinister. I've got some GTA 5 for you, kids. You always I have don't to know, TJ. You always have to be careful what you say, um, preceding or following the phrase "12-year-old kids." But I feel like I. I don't think you were careful enough. Well. I don't think you were careful enough, honestly. Oh well. Well, we do have the deck lineups for you, and we're going to talk about them a little bit while we uh, just wait for this game to get fully set up. Obviously, the Mildred for Tides, the Face Hunter, the Zoo Warlock, and he's bringing Warrior as his new deck. Um, the Freeze Mage for Forsen, the Mech Shaman, the Grim Patron Warrior, and then Hunter as his fourth deck. And uh, I did con get confirmation of this, and we talked about this with Jab, bringing the Double Brawl Warrior. We, we thought it probably was. It hadn't actually checked. These new decks were submitted today, so it wasn't as if they had to submit four decks at the start then only use three uh to this point they submitted this fourth deck having seen what everyone else was playing so it's gonna be really interesting to see if there are any other changes to this warrior or the hunter which are a real meta picks uh so kind of microcosm of the meta in this tournament yeah tides of time in the past has historically been one of the um one of the inventors uh one of the experimenters with control warrior uh there's a lot of People always talk about warrior decks in the meta, or used to back before Tides went on his hiatus when he actually used to do a lot of experimenting with warrior. There was a couple decks that was always like Kit Kat's warrior and then Tides' warrior, and they were completely different. Most warrior decks were very similar to Kit Kat's or very similar to, to, to Fibonacci's or Shows. Like that's that's historically been um, the decks that people look to, and they're all very similar. But Tides' decks were always a little bit, a little bit more edgy. They were always like a little bit slower, or they'd cut cards that everybody said were staples. And uh, so I'm always curious to see what he's going to bring out with Warrior. He could have a Grim Patron Warrior instead. Also, that's a possibility as well. It may not be Control Warrior. Control Warrior probably most likely because he's going up against, um, cause as a counter to Freeze Mage, it's sort of the same, uh, in the same vein as, as why Jab bought Control Warrior as well and why it was so successful to him because it counters Freeze Mage so well. But we'll definitely have to see. All right, so we do have these players ready now. We're just getting this set up. So we are going to see the Hunter from Force and First. We're going to see which version of Hunter this is. And Tides is going to open with the Druid. Um, I guess the uh, 
the the druid is the, the kind of the weakest deck of this lineup because it is specifically targeting other decks so you want to try and get a win with it uh, as quickly as possible you know that if you just keep playing if you just keep jamming the druid from time to time you're going to run into the freeze mage at some point so even if he goes three nil down here tides could actually win this matchup yeah i i really like that tides open with druid um because it it means either he's <laughs> just lucky <laughs> Or he, it, it wouldn't really be lucky. It would just be like a, a coincidence, I guess. Not really lucky. It would be a coincidence. Or he has done his research and knows that Forsen has been opening with Freeze Mage consistently over the, the course of the round of 16 in the quarterfinals. So it's good for him to do that. He can always like, I, I know it sounds weird, but he could essentially just flood the game and, and make it so that he may matches his Mildred up with the Freeze Mage because that's the the likeliest opportunity he's going to have to win with that. Uh, Face Hunter is actually really tough for, for Mildred to beat just because they have a lot of peels but they have no pressure so they're not going to win. You're not going to mill out a, row, or, or a Hunter. They're not really going to run out of damage in time for you to be able to kill them or do enough damage to be able to draw in the combo. Okay, so we see the game here and uh, once again Tides of Time opting not to have the face camera so we get the stoic picture where he faces away from the board when it's not his turn and faces to it when he he only looks at the board when he's playing yeah <laughs> and uh oh, looks like face hunter from forson yep looking at the board now it's yeah. gonna be face hunter from forson you can see some of the telltale cards there so uh this feels like a pretty decent matchup for face hunter i mean you're not often gonna have much in your hand oh god uh so this is probably stop being amused by the picture tj that you're still really picture is just incredible <laughs> because just think about it in like a real life perspective if every time tides played he just turned around like imagine if he, his webcam was actually on during his turn he'd face and he'd, he'd make his play and then he'd just turn his chair completely around on his turn or when it wasn't his turn oh here we go there he is <laughs> oh, it's very well, intimidating if i was forcing i'd be very intimidated right now swipe is a pretty good answer to misha here um, is going to leave those two 1-1 spiders on the board, but the face hunter not getting a huge amount of damage into face so far, but very, very quick game. Second Misha, not a huffer. And uh, if second swipe comes off the top here, this is going to be brutal for Forsen. Oh, no, but does come a wild pyromancer. So actually, yeah, Wrath on the, for three on the Misha does clear everything as well. So Tide's doing really well to deal with the face hunter early on. Yeah, it's true. But at the same time, face hunters are... They're not short on damage. Uh, I guess we'll we'll put it that way. Um, and every turn, Tide's of Time is going to have to deal with what's on the board. And try and make it so that he's drawing into his heals and his big threats. It's a really tough thing to do. We saw yesterday, Tide's looked like he was actually in a pretty good spot against... Uh, against, was it Hunter? It was either Hunter or Zoo. It was one of the faster decks. And he still just wasn't able to close it out because he just wasn't able to get through um, to, to put up a big enough wall and to heal up enough to block that much damage coming out from, from his opponent. Well, let's see if Tyze can outlast the Hunter here with the healing. Forsen just throwing everything he's got at him here. Does have Kill Command and Leroy as well. Yeah. Already puts him at 16. And, I mean, with a beast in his hand, he's got, like, almost 20, 20 damage or burst over the next couple of turns. Um, this is tough. He might have to Cold Light here to try and get something to deal with this Arcane Golem. Yeah. Cold Don't Light see seems like a reasonable option. play because he still has options to deal with this Arcane Golem. He can naturalize it. It always feels bad naturalizing because you know you're just allowing the Hunter... To draw into more damage. There you go. Wrath is, yeah. Wrath is a good pickup. <laughs> That'll do, I guess. So, yeah. He's going to be able to clear this out here. Might even Wrath for one. Use the hero power, I think. No, he's going to go ahead and save save the armor. Not take the damage, which is pretty smart. And he does need to preserve his life total when he doesn't have any more healing in hand. But he's hopefully going to draw into some healing. Well, he's got back-to-back -back Volcanic Lumbers. Which Volcanic Lumber has been a card that some players have been uh, debating about the effectiveness of. 
a lot of the times in order to make it a good card, you a lot of creatures have to die on the board at the same time. Mildred is one of the best classes that it works in, if only because you have combinations like Poison Seeds and Starfall to make it so that sometimes you can have like a 3-4 mana Volcanic Lumber on some of these turns, so... Yeah, that's certainly true. We have seen the Volcanic Lumber kind of do some work for tights, and I mean, there's no... There's unlikely to be a Hunter's Mark in this deck, so Volcanic Lumber, that's going to be really hard for Forsen to deal with. He does get the Haunted Creeper out, so he does have Kill Command as an option. But yeah, it's going to be tough for him to get through, and I think we are just going to see turn 9 Volcanic Lumber. Here we go, he's going to switch. There he is! Tides is back! <laughs> he has to be a little bit afraid of Burst here, though. Like, double Kill Command Hero Power would be enough to finish him off, but he can, yeah, he can clear out the Spider. Obviously, the Spectral Spiders are not uh, Beasts, so it doesn't get the Kill Command activation. So even if he did draw a second kill command there, yeah, if the spider had been left alive and Forsen had drawn second kill command, that would have been lethal. Oh. I don't know if he has enough damage to get through both of these volcanic lumbers. He's going to have to use a lot of his bursts just to push through. And then, second volcanic lumber is going to come out next turn. He's going to have even less ways. I'm not sure if Forsen runs... This is the first time we've seen this hunter deck. Uh, this was a, the His hunter was actually the deck that he added to his lineup for the best of seven sets in the um, in the semifinals and the finals. Um, so we don't know if he's running Hunter's Mark. We don't know if he's running any of the fast cards or like tracking to find something to be able to deal with it a little bit more easily. But he's going to have to throw a lot of damage into these two Volcanic Lumbers, and it, it might be a little bit rough for him. There is a potential for him to run out, but Tides really needs to draw on to heal pretty soon. Yeah. Healing's going to be pretty crucial. He's going to have to use the Leroy to get through here. That's rough. He didn't want the, he wanted to juggle on one of the uh, the other minions. Yeah, so he's going to use the Leroy and one of the spiders here to get through. And just push face damage. He does have a lot of damage in hand. He's got five damage in hand plus the hero power. There's no heal. So he's going to Starfall. Does Starfall let him... You can play the Volcanic Lumber as well, because of the Innervate. Mm -hmm. This is... That's really close. Alright. Second kill command for lethal. No. That's not it. And I think that's game. He's got 8, 9 damage on board, plus 8. No, not quite. Yeah, uh, not quite. He would need... Uh, Force of Nature or Second Savage Roar is lethal. He's got another turn. I don't think so. Swipe's good. Oh yeah, that's it. Is that lethal? I believe it is. I believe it's exactly lethal. 9 plus 8, yeah. Mm, yeah 17 plus 4 plus hero power, that's 22. Oh, exactly that's so lethal. unfortunate for Force. And... and you can see Tides' face. It's just the perfect representation of what it would feel like for a player to get exact lethal. Whenever I have exact lethal in a game where I'm about to die, that's exactly the face that I make. That, that's still Having image of that. time. Having said that, Forsen looks a little bit upset there. And, you know, losing to exact lethal when you're pretty close is always a little bit upsetting. However, the Mill Druid is now locked out. So there's no possibility that Forsen is going to have to run his Freeze Mage into Mill Druid. Okay, okay, okay. But... I don't think he's too worried about that. Because he has a Control Warrior. By opening with Mill Druid... Tides basically covered all his bases. He said, um, I'm opening with what I perceive to be as my weakest deck or a deck that I brought specifically to counter one deck. If I get a win with it, great. I got to win in a situation where I, I probably wouldn't otherwise get a win or I, I'm, I wouldn't expect myself to get in a, in a situation like that, like against Hunter. Um, or force and opens with Freeze Mage, which he has been doing over the course of the round of 16 and the quarterfinals. Tides gets a win against the Freeze Mage, and the deck served the exact purpose that it was brought into the tournament for. Um, so, judging based off the lineup that Tides that Tides made, and adding Control Warrior as his fourth deck for the best of seven sets, I think opening with Mildred was the smartest choice. And being able to get that win out of the way early, even though he wants it's brought to match up against Freeze Mage, is still a really great opening for him. Yeah, absolutely. So, Forsen's going to stay with the Hunter. 
We're just waiting to get confirmation of what Tides is going to lock in. Yeah, Tides is going to go to his Hunter as well. So this is going to be a face Hunter mirror match. Wonderful. Just what we need. Yeah, face Hunter mirror matches. Oh, okay, face Hunter mirror matches are actually a lot more... Uh, complicated than you would originally think. I mean, the nature of mirror matches is that they're very draw dependent, uh, especially with aggro mirror matches because they're so volatile. Having a great start in in face hunter is one of the biggest things, and then the mirror matchup that effect is just amplified. But at the same time, um, being able to set up lethals is probably the biggest thing. Like planning multiple turns in the head as face hunter is the biggest thing. Making sure you're going to have enough damage to finish him off before he can kill you is is actually really tough thing to set up and these matchups are quick a lot of people say oh just who, whoever draws in the most damage first wins but you have to find the balance between clearing your opponent's board and going face it's a little bit more complicated than it may be on the surface and it's a little bit more complicated than anyone will ever give players credit for for playing face hunter absolutely you need to know when to pull the trigger and go for face but you also need to when to need to know when to defend and make sure your opponent isn't going to kill you uh, when you're not really not really paying attention. Yeah, very so, similar hands. Uh, so. Yeah, double haunted creeper, leper gnome in hand for both. Though Tides also has the wave zooka and the abusive sergeant. Both these but players are relatively fast players as well. Actually, in this tournament, we've had a lot of fast players. Jab is is known as fast player. Dog, who we had early in the tournament, knows a fast player. Forsen, uh, Tides, a lot of players that play really rapidly. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we could see... Just think about the Haunted Creeper, Lepronome, or the Wolf Rider here. It's Again, it's really tough to know when to throw these cards out, particularly the ones with one health when you've got these Spectral Spiders, because they trade really well with everything that you have. The, the Spectral Spiders can actually be really crucial in these early stages, because they trade so well with things like Wolf Riders. They can make a lot of difference. It can also be a liability. With cards like Unleashed Hounds and Explosive Trap, sometimes... Um, it all depends. Like I said, this this matchup, a lot of it, a lot of the play styles depend on dependent on those early draws. Tides, uh, Force was the first player to hero power as well, which can be pretty crucial. First player to, to hero, hero power, power wins. <laughs> it's often quite true because you just start winning the race, and you can see Tides is already uh, down to twenty one health. Yeah, I don't necessarily know about that, but it, it is usually the first player in aggro matchups. The first player to gain overwhelming board control is the player to win. You look at Zoo, um, Zoo mirror matchup basically comes down to the player who has one drops wins. If one player has one drops and the other player doesn't, unless they're teching in something ridiculous like Hellfire and Zoo, then usually the game's over just from that turn. Face Hunter has a little bit more wiggle room just because of the variability of drops that Face Hunters can have on early turns. Explosive Trap, that's a good pickup for Force in here. It's gonna be able to help him clear out this board a little bit. And just continue to apply the pressure. Both have Leroy in hand as well. This is going to be super close. Yeah. And Tides often just clear the board not to trigger the explosive trap. He could probably trigger the explosive trap with the weapon. And then, yeah. He's going to do that, then go for the Wolf Rider. Abusive Sergeant to uh, take back some momentum in the life game. Yeah. So I like to compare Face Hunter versus Face Hunter. Uh, to like boxing matchups. In boxing, there's a couple different types of boxers. There's boxers that are very technical boxers uh, that use like um, like superior boxing fundamentals and mechanics to, to beat their opponents. And then there's boxers who just will literally go at each other and they will punch. They will just punch as hard as they can in order to beat their opponents. Face hunter versus face hunter is basically like two boxers entering entering into a ring. Not even worrying about like blocking their faces, not even worried about anything. They're just going at each other and just punching each other in the face as hard as they can. That's basically what this comes down to. Yeah, I, mean, I, uh, I used to cover UFC in a past life, and yeah, that's exactly that. If you're a UFC fan, I guess Face Hunter versus Face Hunter is kind of the uh, the Roy Nelson versus uh, Mark Hunter, the Mark Hunter versus Bigfoot Silva of the uh, of the of the Hearthstone world. Just two fighters going out and punching each other in the face for 25 minutes. And to see if one of them will fall down. Yeah, it's like who can who can punch slightly harder for the course of the match is basically who wins. Mark on Bigfoot Silver was actually a draw in the end. Went to decision. Draw on the judges' scorecards. Well, <laughs> in my Doesn't mind, have... 
in my mind, face <laughs> it wouldn't be a draw. Face center versus face center is basically both players lose. <laughs> All right, so I think situations. that's going to be game for Tides, right? Because he has the uh, yeah, yeah, he has the weapon. Right. The so that's going to be it. Tides is going to take this game and go to a two. Oh no no no! Oh, he didn't have enough mana. He needed one more mana to be able to do it. So that's actually game for Forsen. It's hard Wait, to tell. Yeah, because it's Tides' turn right now. Or Tides' turn right now. So now it's going to be Forsen's turn, and Forsen does have enough mana. Ooh. Oh no! Because if he Leroy's with Knife Juggler on the board, there's a chance that Knife Juggler snipes his Leroy. This is. Okay. It's actually really crazy. <laughs> Look at his face. Yeah. This is this has happened before. I mean, usually you don't play Knife Juggler in preparation to stop a Leroy, but. If, if you notice that your opponent's been holding a card for most of the game, Face Hunter doesn't usually do that unless it's an owl. This is really risky. We'll see. Is Forsen really never lucky? This is the test. Do you think there was a merit to playing the Glaive Zuka first okay. here? Ooh, he got it. And uh, taking out the Knife Juggler? Uh, no, because then he wouldn't have it. He might have still been able to win there. No, he wouldn't have been able to because he wouldn't have enough mana. Duh. And he there had more the next turn. So yeah. So Forsen takes it. A little bit of tension at the end there, but sometimes it can be a little bit confusing who's who, but Forsen, um, proven lucky. Proven there lucky. Well, proven not always unlucky. Yeah, I guess I guess that's true. Um, but that's, you always got to think about that because you, you can't just play Leroy blindly into that. He was thinking, is there any other way I can do this? But if he had played Clave Zuka first, attacked in the Knife Juggler, he wouldn't. He wouldn't have been able to kill him. He would have left two damage on the board, and he would have been at what six health. So two direct damage from his opponent would have been the game. So it was a really close one, and it basically come down came down to that. But uh, the Leroy made it through. Absolutely. It's uh, yeah. It's really tough to know what to do always in these face on our mirrors. But Forsen does get the win there. It was a pretty close race with with double Leroy, one on either side. But we'll see what these guys are going to pick for their next. Obviously, Forsen the Hunter is. Locked out. Now he has the mage, the shaman, and the warrior left. And for tides, it could be the face hunter, the warrior, or the warlock. Yeah. I like going. Mm, it's tough. I think. You try and dodge seven. The... It really. They're going into the second match. It doesn't matter too much. Um, yeah. Uh, judging by what Force and usually goes with, he likes to play the freeze mage a lot earlier, which is a, a different case than usual. A lot of players like to save Freeze Mage for last, so they have more opportunities to win with it. But Force has been throwing it out first. And since he threw it the Hunter first, I'm a little curious, but um, Tides is going to be playing Warlock. And I'd imagine Forsen is either going to play uh, his Mage or bring out that Fell Reaper Shaman, but I'm wrong. He brings out the Warlock. <laughs> You're, you are completely wrong. He's going with the Grim Patron Warrior. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Grim Patron Warrior against Zoo. How does this matchup shape up, TJ? Uh, it's actually it, it's can be pretty decent for the for the warrior. Uh, they have a lot of targets to bounce grim patrons off of. Uh, they have a lot of potential to uh, clear the board early. Fireworks is a huge card. Having despite in your opening hand is a huge card. You can't really afford to be greedy against Zoo when you're playing grim patron warrior. We saw Chalky would always keep grim patron if he if he had it in his opening hand, but that's really greedy against Zoo. And unless you know that you have ways, like if you if you have fireworks already in your opening hand then maybe you can afford to be greedy but uh usually you'll just get really punished for it but it's it's a decent matchup for a grim patron warrior yeah definitely it's uh yeah we saw that with the hunter earlier that you can bounce the grim patrons off it and you can uh it's, it's better against the hunter because you have things like unleash the hounds and haunted creepers and things and web spinners maybe from uh for the mid-range hunter but we'll see what he has here for the warrior it's the yeah the, so the Doctor Boom in this zoo so it's a little bit mid range here with this zoo for tides I think he has the the Malganus in here as well yeah and this is sort of the the interesting Grim Patron Warrior from Forsen what he did was uh, he has cards like that like Commanding Shout he's got Paladin Shredders which sort of which sort of are like um, cards that are sticky that are basically used as as stalling tactics. You basically put them down on the board and force your opponent to deal with them to buy yourself time in order to get to your combos, which I think is really good. 
pot of cheddar is just so good right now that you can basically put it in any deck and have success with it because it serves so many tools. It serves as a sticky body so you can get more aggressive. It serves as a sticky body so your opponent feels like they need to play more more uh, defensively. It just serves a whole different, a whole lot of purposes, and I, I really like it. In the Fire War Axe, in the opening hand, can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, this is a really sluggish start from Tides as well, but a Dire Wolf Alpha on its own is not good. He has the Void Caller, so we'll probably see that come out here, but yeah, Dread Corsair is another card like that Pilot Shredder. It serves two purposes in this deck. It serves the purpose of stalling your opponent so that you can, you can set up and get your combo pieces together, and it can also help you clear up the board before you play a combo. So you can take stuff off the board and, and set up for a big combo turn. I really, I really like this deck innovation from Force, and I think I, I'm not sure if I, I don't think I've seen this deck anywhere else or this kind of deck tech. I think it's more inconsistent, but it has the chance to make bigger combinations. That was really bad as well. Look, rolling low on the Warsong Commander. <laughs> That's rough. That is more than rough. That could be game ending. Uh, <laughs> to be real honest with you. Uh, because two for one cruel taskmaster straight away yeah because now tides is already at 20 health forcen has uh warsaw commander on the board so anything he summons next turn is just going to be able to to contribute to that board <laughs> and now he has frothing berserker as well he actually might clear this with despite but he he risks putting something out on the board that he's not quite ready to deal with um he actually had no he, he's one man away from being able to have the answer to doom garden so Frothing Berserker might be the answer here. I was thinking Commanding Shout as well. Yeah. I guess Commanding Shout plus Berserker could be quite good. Mm -hmm. You can bring your Berserker up to, um, what would it be, 6 attack? Because Minion will take damage 6 times, or 4 times. Only oh, it's the Imp Gang boss as well. You can you can bring the berserker up to yeah you can take the berserker up to eight now <laughs> yeah and wow. uh, he actually has no not quite lethal next turn actually no I think he does have lethal next turn Temple oh PGH yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no on the frothing berserker yeah I think there was lethal next turn because he could have sacked everything in and then whirlwinded to make the frothing berserker bigger so it would have been twelve attacks so that would have been um, yeah exactly twenty damage he would have had the following turn so. Uh, it's a good thing he had that VGH in his hand because he would have lost the game right there. Yeah, that's but pretty it's, rough. But it's still looking really grim because he's at 11 health. The warrior has the board. And he just execute from Alganis. Yeah, Zoo really doesn't... He's not even going to get to Alganis. Zoo doesn't have any comeback mechanics. Right now, he has to Doom Guard and throw it into the, uh, the Dread Corsair because he is lethal on board. And then he risks getting rid of Alganis. I think Silence the Warstone Commander is pretty good as well, so you can stop any potential combos, but that means there's a really good chance you're going to discard Malganis. Yeah. Is he going to go? Chances are he won't even get oh. it. Oh! He keeps it, but now he there's no play that he can make with uh, Wicked Caller and Power of Overwhelming to automatically summon Malganis at the end of the turn, next turn. So either way, it was, it was pretty much uh, he was pretty much done for. Um, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine damage. Uh, I don't think there's anything he can do to draw into lethal with only one mana. Uh, but he does have the execute available. And we're still one turn away from Malganis. I don't think there's anything that Tides can draw this turn that is going to win in the game. Nope. It's a tap. He can draw. And that's it. That's definitely not it. So Forsen's going to get the win here. Go out to a 2 1 lead with that Grim Patron Warrior. And a really quick game against the Zoo. The Zoo just completely blown out there. And such a deck that we've seen this week, this weekend, has been so strong. This Grim Patron Warrior is really a force to be reckoned with. Well, okay. To be fair, that game would have been completely different if you'd rolled on the implosion. If that implosion had rolled a three or a four, <laughs> force on commander. So um, it's not often that just one damage roll completely can completely change the game. But Fortune did have a really fan, uh, a fantastic hand as well to follow up on it. I mean, next turn he could have whirlwind, uh, but you never know. He might have bought Tide some time. <laughs> bought Tide some time. No, I don't know. I'm easily amused uh, to get out Mount Guinness on the following turn. But uh, yeah, that's that's one of the strengths of, of that Grim Patron Warrior against Zoo. He didn't even he didn't even use like the full extent of the combos. That wasn't even Grim Patron Warrior. That was just like Warrior with 
combo cards because he didn't even draw into a Grim Patron. Didn't even get to utilize them. Yeah, exactly. Didn't even need his any any of his combos. But Tides is going to go to his warrior. So we'll see his fourth deck. You know, we've seen all four of Tides' decks here. Again, we're seeing Tides, like uh, Jab and Chucky in the previous semifinal, changing his deck every game, win or lose. And Forsen is going to go to the Freeze Mage. Wow, if this is a... <laughs> this is interesting. So if this is a Control Warrior, this is definitely a bad matchup for the Freeze Mage, obviously. But sacking the Freeze Mage into the Warrior at this point, when you have a 2-1 cushion, is actually pretty good for Forsen. Yeah. So this is definitely this is probably going to work out for Forsen here. Well, um, Tides also has. Okay. Well, Tides has Hunter left that he still has to win with. Yeah, Face Hunter and, the, and then the Zoo. Yeah. So actually, both of Tides' decks are pretty decent against Freeze Mage coming up. But not as good as Warrior. But not quite as good as Warrior, no. Definitely not quite as good as Warrior. There's actually no deck in the game that has a better matchup against any other single deck than Control Warrior versus Freeze Mage. This is what this is actually harder to lose harder for the Warrior to lose than it is for the Mage to win. Just because uh, you have to make a lot of glaring mistakes. The Mage has to has a have a near perfect hand. Most of the time in this matchup, the Mage just runs out of damage. Unless they get, can get a big Archmage Antoninus turn where they basically fill their hand up with fireballs, which can really only be done with the coin, they're most likely going to lose. They need a super early Alexstrasza combined with super early burn. And if they don't have that, if they don't have the ideal hand, it's really easy for the warrior to just take the game. I mean, they can't go through the phases, can they? They, do, they don't have the luxury of no. draw, freeze, burn. They just have to draw really quickly and then burn really quickly mm -hmm. and that's uh freeze mage is just not a deck you can't freeze mage can't be rushed yeah. freeze mage is never late it arrives exactly when it means to uh much like a wizard but unfortunately that often gets punished by the control warrior yeah <laughs> the ultimate counter to to wizards to gandalf the gray is a control warrior or a balrog one of the two um, Balrog was a control warrior player. That's that. That's basically what it comes down to. Is he a? Uh, is Tides trying to mill the warrior? Is Forsen trying to mill the warrior here? Uh, I guess it kind of is. Or he's just trying to get rid of the acolyte. Yeah, I don't think he can really mill the warrior because you can't force him to draw anything. But this is one of the ways that Mage actually does win. It's having early bodies to chip away the armor early. Um, but at the same time, next turn. Armorsmith is going to be able to bring him back up, but this is a decent hand for Forsen. He's got card draw, he's got early bodies to chip away the armor, and he has early Alexstrasza. The only thing he needs is obscene amounts of burn. He needs to draw into Archmage Antoninus and be able to get at least like three or four fireballs from it. And he, he does have the potential to come out on top. Right now, after turn five, usually a warrior at this stage would have like four or six armor which every point of armor counts when you're approaching turns where Alex Draws is going to come out right now he has none and it could be a little bit before he's able to get it unless he clears the board here so we we might be seeing this happen <laughs> the freeze mage win it's it's going to be a tough out. road well, I'm not I'm not calling it out cuz even if they have a really good hand it's still really hard he needs damage even if he gets an Alexstrasza out uh, on turn 9, unless he has damage in his hand, using the Alexstrasza early can work against you because that gives them opportunity to clear off the Alexstrasza and start building armor away from your burn, and then all of a sudden the game just gets out of your reach. Yeah, I mean, as you say, the early minions to get rid of this armor is really crucial, and this is probably the best start that Forsen could hope for in this matchup. And, uh, I mean, the pressure is off Forsen in this matchup because it is so unfavored that he has no pressure to win this. The pressure is on Tides. And at this point in the matchup, to, if Forsen was able to eke out a win here, he then has three chances to win with the super aggressive Shaman deck. So Tides kind of has his back up against the wall a little bit. He needs to win this and get comfortable in the series. Yeah. I wouldn't say his back's up against the wall, at least not in this game, because... It, it is if he loses. Yeah, but it's... Well, actually, see, an Emperor Thor's hand, too, getting Alexstrasza out of turn early. But again, he needs burn. 
He needs burn. That arcane intellect needs to draw into frost or fireball frostbolt. This is actually not the greatest position here for um for force and he need or four tides. He needs to start building up armor as, as best he can. This is gonna be pretty good. He's gonna be able to gain um what four armor this turn? Which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean that's uh that's gonna be pretty difficult. Frostwolf Grunt for the taunt, pretty useless. Well, it blocks damage from, say, like a mad scientist, but it'd probably be killed anyway. All right, let's see. Arcane Intellect needs to be damage, not damage. Nope. That's damage. It's not really the right damage, though. Uh, in order, and all, also in order to win, you need to have a lot of experience as the Freeze Mage playing against Warrior. Um, it's not uncommon, and it's not a bad play. It's actually almost necessary sometimes if you're floating mana on like turn six turn seven where you'd otherwise just be like developing a secret and pinging to just fireball the face to give up armor even pre alex Raza, you want there to be as little armor as possible when you're getting to the alex Raza turn yeah exactly so the doomsayer is going to be taken care of here and the alex Raza could come down but it's not that great it might Gets a fireball, that's pretty crucial. He's got some minions, he does have acolytes. No, um, okay, so he actually has quite a few damage over a few turns. Um, but I think this is the right play. Just only because, oh. oh Armorsmith. Yeah, uh, double Armorsmith, and then he can just start trading in his creatures. Uh, and then end up shield slamming to, to finish off the Alistraza. Yeah, so, this is uh, this is where the warrior wins here. Yeah, he's going to be able to build up six armor just from this turn alone. Yeah, he's going to get himself almost back to exactly where he was before he got Alex Razad. And when you can do that, that's basically game over. Well, his armor isn't as high as I've seen some warriors because freeze mages can burn through uh, twenty six health. Is actually not that not not that much. I mean, he already has what sixteen damage in his hand plus ice lance. And Blood Mage Thanos, which could be used as extra damage as well. So right now he needs to draw into like Archimedes Antonitis or Frostbolt. So let's see if he uh, Blood if he Blood Mage Thanos is um, Frostbolt Ice Lance uh, Fireball. That would be 16 damage plus 26 with Pyroblast, assuming his Blood Mage Thanos doesn't live to the next turn. So he's got pretty much reliably 26 damage in hand right now, which he would have to. Okay, yeah, it's pretty much game over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always like to root for the Freeze Mage just because the underdog story is so real in this game. They're such underdogs in this matchup. But if Armorsmiths, if double Armorsmiths lives on the board and can trade into creatures for three turns in a row, it's pretty much game over. So he's Especially gonna, if you have a shield, maybe. Yeah, so he's just going to try and trade in as much as possible. He's going to be able to gain another, um, what, five armor from this? Four armor from that? No, six armor. Just from trading in his creatures alone. It's a lot of armor. And he has shield made to, as well to gain more health. Wow. This is... I mean, Tides is drawing into his burn here, but it's too late. Yeah. He's going to flame strike and finally clear these armor smiths. But flame strike's going to make him gain eight more armor. <laughs> He's yeah, basically this is really healing rough. him for a e, and a heal that doesn't matter if you're full health or not. And he's gonna have something coming out the shredder, and the uh, Gromash is still alive. If Armor Smith comes out, oh, and Low Walker Chill. Oh! <laughs> okay, the the world is just working against him right now. <laughs> if if the game wasn't already over, Low Walker Cho just means. <laughs> oh man, that's rough. That's really rough. <laughs> Shield block. Oh no. Oh no. And of course, we talked about it quite extensively yesterday. Ragnaros is one of the best cards against Freeze Mage. Even though it doesn't make sense from a realistic standpoint, Ragnaros is literally made of fire. So if you freeze him, you'd think that his fireball wouldn't be able to be cast? Because he's made of fire? Unfortunately, no. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Unfortunately, Blizzard doesn't believe in the laws of the laws of the universe when it comes to All right, well, power blast is going to take him down to 32 effective life 
it's not really the impact you want to have from your pyroblast. And also, it would give tides of pyroblast. All right, well, uh, we, we pretty much saw that one coming. It just took a while to develop. Um, tides does tie the series up two to two. And Forsen, I mean, again, he had the hand that he needed because you saw he got early Alex Straza, and then his next like six cards, four of them were burn spells. So the only way he can win there is if both shield maidens, shield blocks, and armor smiths are all in the bottom ten cards of the warrior's deck. That's yeah, basically exactly. the only way because he actually had more than thirty points of damage in that deck. So even if the warrior was able to gain fifteen armor over the course of turns that Forsen was putting out burst, he still would have been able to win. So he had half of the puzzle figured out. He had his half was good. He had the cards that he needed, but Tides also had the cards that he needed. And when that's the case, the Warrior wins nine times out of ten. All right. Well, we're going to go to game number five here with the series balanced at two to two. Tides is going to go to back to the face hunter. Forsen is going to have another go with his freeze mage. This can be a good matchup for the freeze mage, but it needs to go well in terms of the draws. Um, we saw the draws from Forsen go pretty well in that last matchup, but the draws from the other side were just too good to be able to overcome and that's the, the similar sort of story we could see here with the face hunter the freeze mage can draw really well and win the game but the face hunter also kind of needs to draw badly in order for the freeze mage to win such a tough such a tough matchup it's hard for a face hunter to draw badly when 20 when 22 out of the 30 cards in your deck deal direct damage it's hard to draw badly. Like, pick your poison. Like, what do you rather have? Like, Arcane... Uh, Eaglehorn Bow, Arcane Golem, Wolf Rider. Like, what, what's a what's a bad turn three play for a hunter? There, there's just, like, not one. I mean, I guess on an empty board, you can Animal Companion and roll a Leoc. Like, that's about the worst, the worst play that could happen on turn three, but um, it's just super hard for the mage. Again, like you said, they have to have really great draws. They have to have a lot of draw early. They have to have a lot of points of heal early, like Ice Barriers early on, or Mad Scientists that pull Ice Barriers early on. And then they have to find a way to put together Burn and kill the Hunter before he gets through both of their blocks while trying to stall for damage. It's a really delicate balance, and a lot of times you'll see Alex Raza used defensively in this matchup to try mm. and buy time. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And like you say, like I said in the last game, Freeze Mage is a deck which can't be rushed. It needs to draw into what it, it needs to draw into and play its its own game. We talk about this so often that Freeze Mage is effectively playing solitaire, but the Control Warrior match and this Face Hunter match are two matches where the Mage can't just play its own game. It has to be very aware of what's going on on board and making use of its resources to stay in the game rather than just holding out to a burn turn. The burn turn. <laughs> Well, we're going to see an early Doomsayer, which I kind of—I I really like this as a defensive play. It's going to prevent the warrior from be, the hunter from being able to do too much, though. It does have the hero power, so I'm not sure how much he would have been able to do in that turn anyway. The burn but, turn I'm adding to my list of great Hearthstone-themed band names. <laughs> the first one being Block Poppage. The second one, Foodie Time. And the third one is The Burn Turn. I'll add, I'll add to that list as the day goes on. Okay, you do that. But uh, Arcane Intellect coming out, as well as uh, Acolyte of Pain. So card draw coming in, double Ice Block, double Frostbolt in hand for Forsen. Uh, it's good to have those two blocks, being able to control when the blocks come out. It's a little unfortunate they don't come up Mad Scientists, but you, particularly in this matchup, I think you value more being able to choose when they come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're going to... It's just going to go for face with the Worgen here. I thought he might trade to deny the draws, but... And there's the, the Alex Straza out early as well. Double block Alex Straza. He has all the stall tools that he needs. The one thing he just has to do is live long enough to be able to use all of his stall tools. But the face hunter's drawing pretty well here. Abusive Sergeant, Wolf Rider, Hero Power. That's a good turn. <laughs> That's not a bad turn at all. Yeah, seven more damage. Oh, um, this is so rough. Yeah. He's at 8 health. So, basically, if he Emperor Thoris ends here, his block is getting popped. Um, and then how do you win from there? I don't think it's possible. He would so have you think to, he has the blizzard so here? 
if he if he Emperor Thor's hands here, Alex Straza can come out one turn. So next turn he could ice block again, and then the following turn he could Alex Straza. So Emperor Thor's hand actually he could have lived through that. Uh, but this is the more consistent play, just because he's trying to reduce the possibility that the block could actually be popped this turn. And uh, it actually will. Uh, Unleash the Hounds plus Hero Power would actually only bring him to one health. So he can't pop, pop the block that turn. So that's actually pretty good. So what we're most likely going to see here is Emperor Thorsan. Oh, I don't know, actually. Hmm. Blizzard's really rough here because it doesn't take any power off the board. Blizzard uh, just resets the board state. Yeah. Unless you pop both these spiders first. Yeah. Which I think he might do. He might just uh, trade with the two spiders and then... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, he's just going to go face and trade for the loot hoarder. I think that's smart. It means that he probably can still... He can almost certainly still pop the block next turn with the two spiders. Even if he gets... If, if it takes a blizzard and a trade. Well, he can pop the block with hero power. Yeah, sure. But it means he has the minions left as well to put some more damage in and keeps a board, which is pretty important here. Things like abusive sergeant, if there's healing. All right, so let's. Down. He has to Emperor Thor's end here uh, because he needs the Alex Shaza for the falling turn. Yeah. Hunters can run out of damage, at least from their hand. When they run, they run out of damage from their hand. They're basically top decking for turns. The most damage that they can do each turn from a top deck is on average about three. So if you can play Alex Straza, you can buy, you usually buy yourself with 15 health at least three turns with three damage from hand plus two damage from hero power. So. All right, so you can Alex next turn yep. and then. Block the next turn. Block the next turn. Well, he, he, wouldn't, block... he, he might not even need to block the next turn. He can block and blizzard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so he's going to pop the block here. I guess he has to go Thorison as well. He he knows, he has to realize that Alex Raza is in the hand, in which case he needs to flood the board because he needs to be able to deal with Alex Raza. Because that's a big body. That's an 8-8. Eight, eight. If you're taking 8 damage to the face and your opponent's at 15, then most likely uh, he's going to have the burn necessary. So this is actually looking pretty rough for Tides. Uh, because yeah, and that's going to pull an Ice Barrier as well. Yeah. Yep. So okay. actually, can he can he even pop the block this turn? With Hero Power, yeah. Oh, cool, yeah. So yeah, because he, he can use the Hero Power, but then how does he get that damage and pass the Ice Barrier? I guess he just has a little hope with uh, with Hero Power to, to kill him now. I don't think he's going to be able Charles to do it. Down. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Alex Charles is going to come out this turn. He's going to be at 15 health. Uh, with an Ice Barrier up, so Hunter will not be able to do 15 points of damage just from hand without being able to attack. <laughs> Force he, it. he knows in. it. He knows it. He, he knows does it. actually draw what he needs to kill Alex Straza. He, he can't afford to kill Alex Straza yeah. now. He basically just has to all in and hope that he draws and do enough damage to kill him. But Block's going to come out next turn. Uh, he's going to take 8 damage to the face. Uh, Tides might actually... Mm, I like I like blocking Blizzard. I think you can block Blizzard, and then you can even you could double Force Bolt. You could. There's so many other things you can do. No, I think you just go for the <clears throat> just go for the burn. Uh, so he can set up next turn lethal. So first check. I would check for trap first. Um, see if he can do the eight damage. If he can do the eight damage, then all he has to do is block Frost Bolt, Frost Bolt. That's true. He can Antonidas as well if he wants. Yeah, yeah. He could Antonidas and then Frostbolt, Frostbolt, but he wants to set up a two turn lethal. So check for trap first. If the eight damage lands, just fireball, Frostbolt, Frostbolt, put him in next turn Pyro Blast, and you win. Because hunters don't run points of heal. So. He's going for a barrier here. Barrier and Blizzard. Hmm. This is an inconsistent way to win, but I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. He can basically use anything as long as he blocks this turn and win. So that that would that would basically yeah, there's a concede. There was yes, almost no bad play there. Alright, well Forsen goes up three to two in this match here. He's one game away. He just needs to take one game off either the hunter or the warlock with the mech shaman. 
and Forsen is going to go to our final. That's uh, That was a pretty big win for him. That was a matchup that could have gone either way. could have gone really badly if he hadn't drawn what he needed. But uh, a really confident performance with Freeze Mage. And actually what we're seeing here from Forsen is just how good he is on the Freeze Mage. Control Warrior in such an unfavored matchup. He actually was not too far off being uh, able to get himself to a winning position if those cards hadn't come out when they did. Uh, I don't he think played that... it as well as he could. I don't think that... that... To be honest, there actually was better ways that he could have played it. Um, he needed to have gotten rid of the first armor smith when he could. Like even throwing a, f a fireball into the armor smith uh, would have gotten rid of six burn, but saved him like 15 points of health. So uh, in the end, I don't know if that warrior game is a is a really good indication of of how good he plays for his mage. But uh, against hunter, that that match can be really hard. Um, but making sure you have a defensive Alexstrasza. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit scary to have your to go down to two health and have your block pop, but seeing the Emperor Thoris hand play, slightly obvious, but he played it about as well as he as well as he could, yeah. But now he has to find a mage or a win with Mech Shaman, which is yeah. a very volatile deck. Well, we're going to get into Face Hunter versus Mech Shaman in just a second. But while we do, while we're waiting for this game to get started, remember this is Kingwin for charity. We're here to raise money for Child's Play Foundation. So uh, there's a link down in the Twitch description. You can click to donate via PayPal. Donate to Child's Play, of course. Child's Play Foundation, which buys games and consoles to raise for kids who are going through long-term illness and cancer, to make their stay in hospital and their perhaps their end of their life a little bit better. So make sure you've donated to charity as well to show your appreciation for this tournament. And if you guys keep donating to charity, we'll keep doing more tournaments. And at the end of the day, that's what we want, isn't it? So let's get into this game here. It's going to be the Hunter of Time to Time, the Face Hunter, versus the Mech Shaman. I'm really intrigued to see if Forsen can get a win with the Mech Shaman here, but. He definitely has a good chance of going to the final, and that would be pretty big for him. Forsen versus Chucky would be quite the final, but Tides is certainly not out of this yet. Oh no, not at all. Uh, this Mech Shaman can fall flat on its face, and we've seen that many times before. It's one of the reasons why a lot of players don't run this deck, because of its inconsistency. Uh, it, If it doesn't get the draws that it needs, sometimes it can just flat out run out of cards. Um, because unlike unlike Mech Mage, who they can work on clearing the board with their hero power, they have an active hero power that they can use every turn. They also have huge swing cards uh, like Goblin Blast Mage. Mech Shaman is just reliant on getting a big board early and then drawing into burst. And if they can't do that, they'll just straight up run out of cards. And there is the card of the hour, the Fell Reaver. <laughs> Fell Reaver is nasty. I mean... There's actually some really good plays in the hands here for Forsen. He could Mech Warper Coin a Noyatron next turn. Um, that's a pretty that's a pretty solid Mech play. We've all we've all seen that once or twice, and it's really horrible. Um, not a great hand for the. He's gonna have to use the Quick Shot on the Cogmaster. That is pretty a pretty good idea to clear the board. Has Animal Companion for turn three, but the Mech Warper Noyatron's gonna come down. Yeah. Oh. I don't. I would have taken a little bit more time to think about using that quick shot, uh, because you play Cogmaster on turn one. What are you <laughs> expecting to come out on turn two? Like what? T what two mana mechs are going to come out? Probably Mech Warper or Snow Chugger. Yeah, exactly. And both of those cards are t well. Snow well, Snow Chugger. It's not going to really happen in this this game. But he, he's going to. I think Rock by her face to clear this Huffer. To protect his mech warper so he can play he wants to play fell raver on turn four yeah and unless tides runs the arcane goal okay he's got quick shot here so i think he is he gonna oh it doesn't quick shot the mech warper i don't think he really cares about the ramp uh he's not really playing a control style he just wants to try and race and do as much damage as possible well here comes the fell raver yeah if that fell raver gets one hit in it's gonna be game over. He, surprised he played the Fell Reaver first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is surprising. That's that's probably a misplay. Let's be honest. That's you can probably call that a misplay, and that actually. I don't know. Maybe actually, he. That actually maybe gives Tides. That gives Tides a pretty good out here. It could end up being that he wants the Fell Reaver to be more damaged in case it's becoming a liability. He wants to trade it off. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt in that situation, but um, that's a little bit weird that he decided to play that before checking into the explosive trap. Yeah, and it makes it 
It makes it much easier for Tice to be able to deal with here. So you're I don't like that at all. He's thinking, okay, can I race him? How much damage do I actually have in my hand? What's the most damage that he can do this turn? Uh, Arcane Golem plus Quick Shot would actually be the most amount of damage he could do without seven. He could put him at eleven. If three cards are still left on the board, the next turn he could do three from Unleashed the Hounds, two from his Hero Power, uh, two from Abusive Sergeant, which would be seven. So over the course of the next two turns, he can do 14 damage total, at least. So he's he's buying time. He needs to be able to kill him in two turns. So what he's going to want to do is draw into... If he wants to race, he needs to draw into four points of direct damage next turn. Oh, Crackle's okay. pretty huge. Yeah. So he's going to go ahead and kill it off. That's probably the smarter yeah. choice. Crackle's actually probably the card that was the worst to be killed off. Holy... Forsen. This a lot of damage. Lava Burst, Doomhammer, Power Mace. That's 13 damage over two turns with five damage on board. He can set up lethal next turn as long as his board isn't cleared. So if he does four damage to face this turn with the Doomhammer plus set, plus the other five damage, he'll put him at 14 health. Playing the Power Mace this turn is more damage over two turns though. Because you can then, you can kill the Power Mace by playing the Doomhammer next turn without swinging. So you can then do four damage with the Doomhammer plus get the buff on one of your mechs. It's also less consistent though, because what if he clears the board? It's true. If he sees Power Mace, most likely he's going to clear the mechs off. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like he's going to play Power Mace. Okay. So I guess he's going to clear the Abusive Sergeant. Yeah, he's going to clear that off. So, Tice can clear up with Unleash the Hounds and Quick Shot here. Does Glaive Zuka as well? That's a good pickup. Can't play all though. One mana short, unfortunately. So he's gonna. You can clear the both both the mechs though. Mm -hmm. He helps to keep one of the hounds alive. Yeah, uh, having him taking the two damage on your face is more important than uh, getting rid of is oh keeping one of the hounds is more important oh geez water pickup though from tight from forcing to getting the whirling zapomatic you can kill off the power mace um and equip the doom hammer so he yeah. has four he has nine damage just from hand alone you can actually yeah he can attack once more with the doom hammer four five six Nine that's really... He needs three points of direct damage from his hand. That's not it. He can play a... he can play Haunted Creeper and quick shot for the card draw. That might be his best way to win. I've never actually seen that before, playing uh hitting with a weapon on a turn and then equipping Doomhammer the same turn. It's uh Yeah. Force is gonna get quick shot here. Okay, it's a good thing he threw that quick shot into the Whirling Zapomatic, because if he hadn't then he would have drawn into Haunted Creeper that would not have been enough damage for him to win. Um, uh, Rockbiter wins the game. There's a lot of outs here for him. He has 9 damage. He needs 3 points of direct damage here. That's yeah, not he, it. He only needs 2 because he has 4 from... Because he has the Spell Power Totem on board. Oh yeah, yeah. He only needs 2 points of direct damage. That's correct. So 6 from the Lava Burst, 4 from the Doomhammer. He has 10. Kill he Command doesn't... off the top is a win. He's debating whether or not he could he can afford to kill the beast. Because if he kills the beast, then he would force him to have a beast plus kill command next turn to win. Actually, Which he does have. Yeah, and it would matter, but he's saying, you know what, I won't have lethal next turn. It all comes down to this draw. He's great. There it is! Kill command is the top! Oh my god! What an insane wow. draw! Forsten is going to win this series and go to the final when it's insane! No, no, that's, that's, Tides of Time is playing the hunter. Sorry, Tides of Time is... <laughs> oh, man. What? It's going to tie oh, it up. So we're going to go to one more game. So Forsen, God damn it. So Forsen has one more opportunity to win with the Mech Shaman. I got overexcited. I could tell. It's okay. Sorry, guys. One more opportunity. I just really want to see... What the, I just really want to see the Forsen boys in the final. I got overexcited. Biased. Sorry, TJ. I'm on Tides of Time side now, then. It's a battle. So Forsen gets killed by the top deck kill command. He's not too happy about it, <laughs> if we can see. Uh, but he has one more chance to win with this shaman against the warlock. So what would have happened there if Forsen actually killed the haunted creeper? Tons of time, so would have won. Just kidding. 
yeah. wouldn't have mattered. Um, he might be thinking that it would have mattered because Kill Command came off the top. At the time, actually didn't show Haunted Creeper. <laughs> Um, if he didn't have if he didn't have a beast in his hand, it actually would have been seven damage, so he would have been one off. Uh, but Forsen doesn't know that, so right now he's probably tilting really hard, thinking that he just got top decked. He did, but it feels worse than it actually was, because he feels like he made a misplay, and his misplay was what caused him to lose. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. As you say, you can see. I mean, we can see him right now. He's got his head in his hands a little bit. You guys can't see him, but we can see him, and. Uh, yeah, like you say, it's kind of funny that that's going to feel a little bit to him, maybe like a misplay. Uh, that he could have taken the beast off and would have, would have maybe have won the game. But we know, obviously, it wasn't a misplay. So we'll see if that affects him going in here. He has another chance with this Mech Shaman, a deciding game, our second seven-game series on the semifinals. Person actually getting up real quick. So It'll be a second before we can get you into this game. He's leaving. He's done. <laughs> He's going to play the long con when it comes to the mulligans. Alright. So these players are ready. Their mulligans are coming in. And it's going to be the Mech Shaman of Forsen versus the Zoo of Tides. It all comes like... down to this. Two series in a row, it comes down to game number seven. We couldn't really ask for anything more than this. And Forsen's hand is actually pretty good. Um, Crackle, he might want to substitute that for something else. The burn in Mech Shaman is something that you want to draw into later on in the game, once you've established a board and been able to establish some damage. Uh, but he does have a decent hand. Yeah, it's not too bad. He has the Power Mace as well, the double Anoyatron. That was obviously a pretty good answer to the Anoyatron. Sorry, I'm still reeling a little bit from my epic misplay in that last game. Need to get over it. Need to get my confidence back. Feel just, a little bit gun shy. I guess you're so used to seeing Forsen playing Hunter that sometimes uh, uh, you can get a little bit mixed up, but uh, I'm excited to see game seven. Owl has to come down on the first Anoyotron, and the Sea Giants in hand is actually not that great. The board could mm -hmm. be flooded with totems, but he's got all of his big creatures already in his hand. This is not a very good start for him. And there's no minions for Forsen to put out here to help Tides. None. This could be rough. So yeah, we're going to see Power Mace. This Forsen just starts to clear up the board a little bit. And uh, these two Anoitrons, one of them is going to get buffed from the Power Mace. Could still buff the Silence one, of course. I think, I think Tides has to tap here. This is, one of, good, but... this is one of those matchups where you have to think a little bit about your your tabs. And you also have to try and um, make it make so you can set up a Sea Giant. Because <clears throat> even though it's not something you usually play into, Sea Giant is usually something that you plan for maybe one turn ahead or maybe on the turn that you're actually playing it. But this is a game seven in a series like this. He really needs to find a way to get as many minions on the board as possible to be able to play those Sea Giants because those are going to be the only opportunity that he's going to have for a win. Dr. Boom can act as sort of a comeback mechanic, but a lot of times he gets Mech, mech Shaman. If you fall behind early, it could be too late. As long as they have Burn in their hands, sometimes it can just be just too late. And... Yeah. There's so many spells in hand for, for Force in here. I think he just needs to go face with a Power Mace and just push the damage because he has Lava Burst and Crackle. Next turn, even with the spell power to him, he can actually do 13 damage plus 4. He can do 17 damage. And the Earth Shock for the Nerubian Egg is, per is the perfect dancer as well. Yeah. The fact that it's 3 4s protected by the Taunt is really good as well. That's the one he wanted the Power Mace buff on. Yeah. So this guess... damage is getting really scary. Yeah. Roll spell power to him as well. That'll get him. That gets into Earth Shock. Is able to use in the Nerubian Egg. He could have put the Urshock on the uh, Haunted Creeper if he didn't roll it, but it wouldn't have been as potent as it was here. Uh, this is problematic, though. This is a really tough board to deal with. A lot of times, Mech Shamans will cut AoE in favor of more burn. Yeah, there's don't, no, I don't think there's any Lightning Storm in here. No, you'll see some Mech Shamans. Um, there's actually not many players that play Mech Shaman. Uh, RDU plays it. Uh, we see Forsen playing it, but not many people... Zixil are, plays it. Zixil plays it as well, yeah. 
there's not many people that are brave enough to play it just because of its inconsistencies. And the ones that do rarely put Lightning Storm in. And if they do, it's only one. And a lot of times they'll say, well, if I'm only running one Lightning Storm and it's inconsistent of a draw, I might as well just turn that Lightning Storm into more burn. And that's what they end up going with, so. Yeah. No, I think I think that's a really sensible line to play. I mean, he has to use the Rock Fighter to deal with that four health Void Walker. That's feels pretty rough. He's thinking about whether or not he needs to put the yeah he needs to put the Annoyatron into the Spider here. Oh no, he doesn't go for it. Okay. Well, Sea Giant can come down. Yep, we could see for a Sea Giant. It's the only real back to back Sea Giants. He either Sea Giants or Dire Wolf Void Callers and. C Giant without a demon in his hand, C Giant just puts way more more power on the board immediately. Now he can clear, have a C Giant. <laughs> I thank you. So how much damage is there? Does Forsen just ignore the C Giant and race here? Yeah. Alright, so six, thirteen, sixteen damage maximum he could do. So if he fire elementals. Oh my goodness. He has to think about his overload as well, though. So if he mm -hmm. fire elementals this turn and hits face, he'll have to roll. He'll have to... Oh, I think he need to use the spells this turn, to be honest. <clears throat> he might even actually need to take up the Sea Giant. If he's going to go for a race, he needs to crackle face first to adjust to whatever roll that he, roll that he gets with the crackle. Yeah, I think so. I think he needs if to he, crackle here. If he rolls low on the crackle on face, then it pretty much means that he can't start to race. All right. Are we going to see the crackle here? He's not guaranteed to have that spell power totem either. Yeah. I think he needs to crackle and oh, he's going to oh, he's gonna, have a burst. He's going to take out the sea giant, I think. No, he's going to go for... Oh, yeah, he's no, going to crack yeah, the Sea Giant. He's going to take out the Sea Giant. The only reason he would play that first is if he was planning on using the Power Mace into the Sea Giant. Yeah. He actually rolled high, so he could have gone for a two-turn kill, even without oh. even using the Whirling Zapomatic. That's tough. Yeah, and now his Whirling Zapomatic is going to get killed. So he's realizing that maybe he should have gone YOLO. And C second Sea Giant's going to come out. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, this is this is the swing against the Mech Shaman. Like you say... This is the problem with the inconsistencies. You have to make those calls. You end up making the wrong one, and he, now he, he's staring down a sea giant. Does it get fire elemental out? And has lava burst, but yeah, it's actually hard to see where the damage is coming from right now. If he shouldn't, what he should have done there, and this is a really hard call to make because you're basically all inning and telling your opponent that you have lethal. It's crackle the face. If you hit for six or seven, you have guaranteed lethal over the next two turns. And if he doesn't roll if he doesn't roll high, he still could have lava bursted and power maced the sea giant as sort of a last ditch effort. Uh, but now, I mean, I think that's going to be game over. Yeah, I think it is as well. I think. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. He needs three direct damage from hand. That's not it, but he does have lethal if he gets good boom bots, but it's really unlikely. He can so tap into power overwhelming. He can tap into power overwhelming. He's probably just going to play it safe here, though. Try and clear as much as he can um, with what he has on the board. Put himself in the best position to win. He's thinking, what cards do I have in my deck that'll win me the game? And it's only power overwhelming, I think. Oh. Let's recalculate. He, Nine. He's, no, he's, he's one off there. One off. Right, okay, so this if this second bomb goes to face. I would tap here. Two. He can draw into lethal. Second abusive sergeant. Yeah. Power overwhelming. Dire wolf. Defender of Argus. No, he's not gonna do it. I think you should I think tap is the right answer there, but. He's just playing a bit more safe. Yeah, this is a lot more consistent of an answer. Yeah. Okay, so... That's it? That's oh going to be it. Tides of time. After I called it for forcing. <laughs> I think Tides of time. You cursed him. I did. Tides of time is going to go to the finals. He's going to play Chalky in our winner's match. And our next match coming up, obviously, is going to be Jab versus Forsen. Yeah, all Forsen can do. He's going to concede, and that's going to be it. So Forsen goes to our third place match, and Tides of Time is going to the final, the King Win for Charity, Easter Edition 2015. Wow. Really what impressive. a, what really a match impressive. that was. Yeah, and Forsen's going to be 
really upset. I, there was a couple plays that he could have made there that he thinks would have would have won in the game. Uh, the doom hammering into the uh, haunted creeper wouldn't have mattered. We know that, but it'll matter to him until he rewatches what happened. Um, and of course, that last play, his crackle did roll seven. If he had actually crackled face, he would have had lethal over two turns. And it seems like that's the only way that he could have any, had any chance. It's such a tough call to make because if he rolls low yeah. on that crackle, if he goes to face and rolls low, he basically loses anyway because he's forced to lava burst and attack into the power mace without using the buff. But just really tough call to make and well well played by Tides. I mean, you, you have to hand it to him. He played just about as consistently and as solid as you could possibly play. And seven game series again, coming back from a deficit. Same thing that Chalky did in the first series as well. This is going to be a good finals. Absolutely. So it's going to be Chalky versus Tides of Time in our best of seven final. We're either going to have a player winning his first title or we're going to have another uh, one player winning his first title after a long break from Hearthstone and reestablishing himself. But before that, we're going to see Jab versus Forsen in our third place matchup. And I have to say, I mean, that was really hard to take for Forsen, that final, those final couple of losses. And I think that almost gives the edge to Jab in many ways because it just... Forsen's going to be a little bit tilted and it's going to be... Jab's going to have had some time to bring himself back after losing that semi-final, get over the disappointment and, uh, you know, be able to see this as the opportunity that is to, to finish third rather than fourth. Yeah, very true. Uh, it's still like, just, it feels like a consolation prize at the end of the day, third place. But it is, of course, bragging rights, a little bit more money. Um, is it a little bit more money? No, it's the same money, but okay. it's... Uh, Bragging well, rights. Ghost of Gamers rankings as well. Yeah, Ghost of Gamers points, um, bragging rights as well. Yeah, saying, exactly. saying top three sounds a lot better than saying top four. What's well, a and, bronze medal as opposed to no medal? Yeah, and of course, um, I mean, it's probably fun to play in an environment in a tournament setting where there's not as much pressure on you to perform. Because third place, you can have a little bit more fun, you can take a little bit more risks. Uh, but I'm sure these guys are going to be getting to win. Jab, I'm sure, wants to stake a claim in the 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 real estate of of lands of people that have taken out force in, in tournaments. All right, well, we're going to go to a quick break, and we're going to be back with our third-place matchup, Jab versus Forsen. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Kingdom for Charity Easter Edition 25.